Hello everyone and thank you so much for all your inquiries and questions in regards to capital gain inclusion rate increase during the latest budget in Canada. I thought, you know, there, there's got to be something that could help you manage um, the due date, which is uh, June 25th, 2024, um, up to what date you can still uh, claim capital gain at 50%. So basically, if you earn a dollar in capital gain, 50 cents goes to the taxable income and the other 50 cents goes into your capital dividend account, which is tax-free to you. With the new change, what's going to happen is in that $1, you'll have 50 cents. Instead of 50 cents, you're going to have 66.6% .6 of that dollar go into your taxable income and only 33% would go into your capital dividend account. So it drastically reduces your opportunity to earn more money tax-free. So, you know, I'll be um, sharing a video with you. It is designed and operated by Mr. J.P. Laporte. And you'll see how he would show you step-by-step -step how by exercising an individual pension plan, your corporation can actually help you take benefit of this window, the window that we have from today until June 25th, 2024. So by all means, watch this video. I'm going to share it with you right after mine and come back to us with any questions, any concerns that you may have. Okay. I will also be sharing my calendar link so you can book a 15 minute meeting with me to discuss your individual scenario. Along with individual pension plan, there are other strategies that you can use. However, um, you know, once you book the 15 minutes and we are discussing it together, we'll go through different strategies, including the individual pension plan, to go over what can be done in advance to keep away from such changes in laws um, that make you pay more tax. At the end of the day, if we can help you save some money and save some time for your family, that's what it's all about. That's what financial planning is all about. Um. Thank you for taking time to uh, listen to this clip. So we're just going to do some short illustrations on the impact of the federal budget, uh, how this impacts physicians that are using a medical professional corporation. So some of the things that happen in this budget is that the primary change is that the capital gains inclusion rate, meaning how much of a capital gain has to be taxed is increasing from 50% to 66.6% if a medical corporation earns these capital gains after June 25th of this year. The other problem is that the capital dividends account will be reduced from the current 50% to a mere 33.3%. Uh, so that means that the tax-free capital dividends that a lot of physicians were counting on in order to supplement their income will be reduced uh, on a go-forward basis because of this tax change. The other problem is that because more passive income is going to be generated inside of the medical pressure corporation, when you're looking at the investment portfolio, since we're jumping from a 50% inclusion rate to a 67% inclusion rate. That means there's more taxable capital gains that are treated as passive income. And what that does is that it eats away, it grinds down the $500,000 small business allowance that each professional corporation has, unless it's de denied. Um, meaning that instead of only facing a 12.2% active business income tax rate, a lot of these corporations will now have to face a 26.5% active business income rate on the income that's earned by the corporation, the top line revenue. So really, we're dealing with three tax problems, which when you tally them up, is going to make it a lot less efficient to use the corporation as the primary way to save for retirement. So let's just crunch through the math. 
Uh, we're going to use a sim simple example. Imagine that the Medical Professional Corporation bought 1,000 shares of whatever company, it doesn't matter, and each of these shares, because it's just a single company, were, were worth $100 when it was purchased. Now, over the passage of time, the value of that stock has gone up, so each share, if it were to be sold, uh, would be worth $300. So let's assume that before June 25th, before this cutoff that's been put in the budget papers, the Medical Professional Corporation decides to sell those 1,000 shares to turn them into cash. Well, that's $300,000 of cash. That's what we call the proceeds of disposition. But because the adjusted cost base, the cost of buying those 1,000 shares way back when was 100000 the capital gains is the difference between the two. So it's 300,000 minus 100,000. So it's a capital gains of 200,000. And the lock as currently written before June 25th states that only 50% of that $200,000 capital gain is includable in the taxable income of the corporation. Now the tax rate on passive corporate investment uh, investing is 50.17% right now in Ontario. That's a combined federal provincial tax rate. So that means that if we pocket $300,000 in cash, but then we have to pay $50,000 in change in taxes, the balance that's left to pay out a dividend or do whatever uh, is $249,830. Now, there is a capital dividends account credit of 100,000 that represents the other 50% of that capital gain. So that's a, that's the good that's good news. Now, with the changes to the budget, to the Income Tax Act, if those same 1,000 shares were sold after June 25th, again, assuming that each share is now still worth $300, we still have the same $200,000 capital gain. But since we've increased the inclusion rate from 50% to 66.6, .6, now the taxable portion is 133,200. And using the exact same 50.17% corporate investment tax rate, the taxes owed have jumped from 50,170 to 66,826 and 44 cents. So we're now looking at extra taxes of $16,656 and change. So that's definitely bad or the bad news. Also, instead of enjoying $100,000 of CDA credits, which is the non-taxable portion of the capital gain, because the inclusion rate is 66, that means that the CDA is now 33% of the capital gain. So 33% of uh, 200,000 is only 66,660, okay? So all of that was assuming that we don't set up a pension plan. But now, if we decide to put a personal pension plan in place, uh, the left hand of this table here, this stays the same, this is what we had on the previous slide. But now, once now that we have the pension plan, let's assume that we're allowed to contribute $200,000 to the pension plan. We still have a $200,000 capital gain. The taxable portion, 66.6% .6 is still 133,200. That hasn't changed. But we now have an offsetting tax deduction at the corporate level of $200,000 because we use some of the $300,000, we use 200 to contribute it to the pension plan. And since every dollar contributed is an offsetting tax deduction, we have more deductions than we have taxable income. So the taxes owed by the company is not $66,000, it's zero. And we still have a capital dividends account credit of 66,660, which is 33% of the $200,000 gain. So the, do the doctor, uh, because there's still $100,000 sitting in the investment account, remember the other 200 went into the pension plan, out of that 100,000, the doctor could declare a tax-free capital dividend of 66,660, which means zero personal tax owing. Now that's not the end of the story because there are a bunch of other 
tax advantages that flow from this. One is that by having removed $300,000 from the balance sheet of the Medical Professional Corporation, what we've done is we've provided that extra protection against the passive income grind or problem that we alluded to earlier. Um, why? Because first of all, it's not passive income of the company, it's sitting in a pension plan and it's tax exempt anyway. So there's nothing uh, to tabulate. So that means that the Medical Professional Corporation can enjoy the much lower 12.2% active business income tax rate for a longer period of time. So that's the first advantage that people often forget. Furthermore, by removing $300,000 from the balance sheet of the company, we're also helping with the purification process. And this is one of the conditions that any business uh, must meet when it's trying to sell its shares to a third party to give the shareholder access to the lifetime capital gains exemption. So right now, the lifetime capital gains exemption before the budget becomes law is hovering around 1 million. It's a little bit more than 1 million, but the proposed budget rules would bring that up to $1.25 million. So using the removal of those passive assets off the balance sheet because we're transferring them into the pension plan or, or paying them out as a uh, uh, tax-free capital dividend or whatever we do with it, we are helping with this purification process. And finally, um, if we remove the money from the balance sheet uh, and put some of it in the pension plan and some of it is spent, uh, we are also protecting the client from what's called the departure tax. And this happens when a physician in this case, but it could be any business owner, decides to leave Canada and become a non-resident of Canada for tax purposes. So this is one kind of hidden, not hidden, but it is one of those taxes that a lot of people never think of because they don't think of retiring outside of Canada. But there's more. Um, the $200,000 that got contributed by the Medical Professional Corporation to the pension plan is now going to grow without any taxation. So uh, that's good. And in fact, even if the federal government decided one day to push the limits and go even further than 66%, and this has happened in the past, there used to be a time when the capital gains inclusion rate was 75%. So even if they went to 75%, 80%, 90%, or 100%, it would not make any difference because every dollar that's contributed to the pension plan is a full deduction against any new tax on the capital gain. So there would be no tax problem uh, on a go-forward basis. The other point to make is that the personal taxes that a physician would pay when they receive a pension from their pension plan, depending on the country in which they live in retirement, could be as low as 15%. And this is a flat rate. It's not graduated. It doesn't depend on how large the annual or monthly pension amount is. So contrary to what residents have to deal with, where the top bracket is over 50%, for non-residents, if you're collecting Canadian pension income, uh, depending on the country in which you live, there's about 100 different countries, it could be as low as 15%. And if you're not uh, living outside of Canada in retirement and you are in Canada in one of the 10 provinces or the three territories, and you are collecting a pension from the pension plan, while that pension is taxable at normal brackets, it's possible to pension income split with a spouse usually a spouse that has no income or very little income. By that mechanism, the couple ends up uh, going into a lower tax uh, owing situation. So if you thought that this was useful, uh, you should speak to our specialists over at Integris. You can visit us on our website or speak to your financial advisor. Thank you so much. Have a great day.